Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. So today on Facebook, a few minutes ago, I saw that someone asked how to do a RC car wing or a spoiler for that car. So it's for um, RC applications, so it doesn't have to be like super precise or super good looking, but it's nice to have it like in a solid model. So I'm going to show you a super quick way of using the forms tool to achieve um, a, a great looking spoiler in, in, uh, in some way. So the problem itself was something like this. So if you see here, um, they kind of want to draw the spoiler onto a image. I mean, these measurements should possibly be, I mean, you should be able to just measure that by hand. But they've started really good, they have a symmetry, they've drawn it from above. I mean, you can kind of keep this shape, but I, I think that to achieve these kind of bends, like these de deformation in the, in the model, I think it's easier to do this in a different way. So let's break down what we need to do. So, so we have this one big shape, let's, let's say the big wing. We also have the uh, attachment points, we also have the wing caps. So there's a few things that we kind of want to do and try to zoom in here. That's difficult, but uh, the end cap is kind of, it doesn't have to fit really well. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you how to do this quickly. So I've set up a canvas on the model here, nothing fancy. Good to know is that the canvas should be, or the reference you have should probably be aligned to uh, at least one axis so we can mirror things around that axis. So in this case, we want to start by doing a form, but we can actually start with a sketch, for example. So if we have a wing profile that we want to use, we can start with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on sketch, do it on the, what's that, the XZ plane, sorry, YZ. And we'll go around here, we'll zoom in a little bit, and we will design some sort of wing. Um, just some basic shape. Again, it should be printable. So if we do uh, maybe something like that, of course, we don't need to have that. So I'm gonna dra drag these around and, and switch them a little bit. And this is also way off. Hmm. Let's go ahead with something like that. But I think I might want this to be, yeah, bent like so. This one also, hmm. Do really want that? No, I think I'm gonna do it like this. Two, two single lines, and we should have something good to start with. I'm not ex I'm I'm not a error engineer, so let's go ahead and start with that. Now we can of course make this an offset. What I really wanted uh, this software to have is some sort of way of doing uh, like a slot offset because that's basically what we want to do here. So I'm taking the same measurement on both sides, 0.75. I am making this a construction line so it doesn't interfere. And then we can go ahead and, and close this off by using a two point circle. Clickety click, clickety click. And then of course we can just trim the inside here. Okay, so now we have one big nice profile. It's a bit big for this case, but uh, <laughs> The, the interesting parts comes now. So we can finish the sketch. We can go in and do a create form. Uh, what we can actually do here is to extrude this form and have that selected. So if we start to extrude now, it's important that while we're in this step, we want to use symmetric. So this means that we are creating a symmetry and we can maintain uh, both crease edge, but uh, embed the symmetry. That's kind of what we want to do. If we look at the shape, we can also increase the facets a little bit. So the more facets, the smoother it's going to be. So let's go ahead with something nice like 16. Front faces is basically not really important. So, um, okay. Why doesn't it show that? Did I? I probably changed something. There we go. Shaded with visible edges. Sorry. My bad. Okay, so... In this model, what we can do is that we can start to select things. Now, if we look at it, we haven't really done a lot. All we have done is that we have uh, the 2D profile that we extruded. But if we double click on the edges here, we select the whole thing. Before we start to get really crazy, I think we want to just move that into uh, more of the center. So we have a flatter surface. 
So if we continue to just drag out a few more lines here, it still has this wing shape. And, and uh, if we look at the reference image, the whole plan was to have a little bit more of a flat area in the middle and then more bent area at, at the end. So what we can go ahead and do is that we can go back into this shape. We can move into a easier mode to work with. It's much easier to work uh, in the display mode and we change to the box mode. So now it's easier for us to, for example, select some of these surfaces. Let's go ahead with those ones. And we can move them up and flatten them a little bit. So you see now things are getting uh, flatter here in the top. Something like that maybe. We can actually select this one too. Kind of want to keep a track on how the 2D profile looks, but something like that. Maybe even take this edge down a little bit. So just to make sure that we have like the thickness here. So maybe something like that. Now we can, while we're in this view, we can actually like start to shape this a little bit. So we can scale it, maybe move it forward a bit, uh, drag out the new one. Also shrink that a little bit, depending on, I mean, this is up to you what kind of design you want to have on the wing. But since we're, we flatten uh, the main part, everything you do from this point and outwards will be like, keep the same profile. So um, maybe we can even move those two forward a little bit. Double click on lines, maybe move those two, those ones as well, just to get like a nice surface down over here and something nice over there. Now, if you notice how um, this was created when we extruded the profile, it kind of keeps to, it kind of wants to add several lines. So my general thumb of rule, whatever or whatever it's called is that the more lines you have the sharper things will be or the more defined so when we look at this surface and this surface we have a lot we have very few lines which makes it a very smooth surface which is exactly what we want the wing to be a very smooth but the, these edges we want to have controlled now if you want to have more details for example on this one and this one Keep an eye out how these looks now when I turn it back from a box mode to a smooth mode. So we still have, we have the bend, everything looks pretty, pretty well, but it's not really defined. So if we look at the reference again, it might be more defined at one area compared to the other one. We want maybe a shorter like bend. So one thing would be to, I really don't want to have things if I remove the canvas. Uh, Maybe a little bit easier for you to see. Um, so what we can do is that if I move this closer, you can see we are starting to uh, shape it up a little bit. But then we might get problem with uh, like how far it should be in this direction. But maybe maybe you're happy with that, and then that's fine. But another way that I like to do it is to select one of these lines, because again we have already made everything else flow in a good shape. So if we can add details locally, we don't have to change the overall shape. So that's why I like to use the tool called bevel, bevel edge. So if we shrink that down a little bit, so let's say 0.2, for example, click OK. You can see that it, it kind of adds a line and makes it sharper, but it does it within the, within the space it has to move on. So let's go ahead and do the same down there. We have now added details or added a little bit of a sharpness around the center here. And if we want to be really, uh, I mean, we can do a lot here. If you want to achieve some cool results, you can maybe widen it at the edges. And um, a tip here as well is if, if you select one surface, you can double click on another one and it selects everything between those. So we can do that here as well, double click. And now we want to, we can move these out as well and achieve like some more different shape here. Like the bend now is weirder, but yeah, that, that's basically how you do this. And again, if we have, for example, we have, we're working in a parametric flow here. So if we close this form, this is not closed because it's only an open profile. So if we look at the bodies, it's an open body. It's not a solid yet. But um, 
I'll show you how to fix that in a second, it's super easy. But if we want to combine this with a third shape, so let's go ahead and, and just for the fun of it, let's say that we know exactly which distance we want to draw uh, the end plates of the wing. So in this case, I'm just getting a reference. Let's say it was uh, minus uh, 40. That's exactly where we wanted to draw the end plate. So I'm going to make a sketch on that plane, as you can see. Go ahead and look at the model. And maybe we, we have some fancy design here. It should be like this dimension. And up here, it should be 7. We're going to drag a line somewhere in between. And maybe we can get this line to be tangent to that one. Oops. I want... I want you to, you should be fixed. And then I want to tangent this to that and this to that. And then we can do, uh, let's, let's do, let's just be a little bit creative here. <laughs> let's do another circle down there. Let's make a line. Let's make another line. Oh, you don't have to be parallel. And you should also be fixed. So now we had, we go and do Tangent to that one, tangent to that one, you are tangent to that, and you are tangent to that. Ah, uh, of course, this one. This one is not correct. There we go. So now we have our surface. We can do some trimming. Trim, trim, trim. Oh, yeah, we can trim this one as well. There we go. So now we have the, the profile that we want to do. So if we extrude this, let's say uh, 1.2 millimeters, we get that over there, but they are still not connected. Again, what I showed you there was a really quick way of doing some parametric drawing, but it, that's not really what we care about today. We care about making sure that this wing, oh, by the way, we can do all of these before the form, so I can now change my form and still have this model. So we can still do uh, like this, um, maybe draw in an extra shape or something to finalize the, the form. Something like that. But we still don't have an a closed body. So if I hide this body over here, to close this off, we have to go into the tool called Surface. We click on Patch. We patch that one. We can also patch this one. Oh, we have to do another patch. And then we stitch them. So we stitch, we click on the main body first. We click on that one. All the lines look green. We're good. All the lines are green here as well. Click OK. Now we have a body. And yes, you guessed it. If we take this body here, we can actually mirror that along our XZ plane. So we get it over there. And then we can, if we want to, combine all of them. Maybe you're uh, printing them differently. Maybe you're printing this um, spoiler like standing, which will probably be a pretty good way of doing it, depending on the size. You might want to add these or glue these on later. We can also do like this, that we do a little bit of a fillet around here. So 0.4, for example. Same on this side. And now if we, like, I mean... Um, I mean, this is a way for you to 3D print this. So if you want to now, a good way would be to split this model in the center. And then you have two models that you can uh, kind of rotate and maybe print in this orientation and then glue together or whatever. That, that might, might help. We're going to back up a little bit. So there you have your, your spoiler. And yeah, you're free to change it however you want to. Do changes, maybe go in and do... Uh, Let's do something fun here. Let's go in and edit form. Maybe drag this up a little bit. I don't know why you would want to do that. Oh, by the way, I need to, um, before we do that, we want to select a few edges over here, as well as a few edges over here. These ones maybe. I don't know why you would want to do this, but if you did, you can. Maybe if you even want to uh, like lower them even more, 
we could do something like that. It's really up to you how, however you want to do that. And of course, if you want to create a, um, a whole profile, you can do that here. We can create a, uh, a line from the center. Just use that as a um, construction line because then we can uh, click a rectangular on that. Let's say 12 by 12. Move that around until what's good. And if we're supposed to have holes on that, we can click one hole. We can do a circular pattern of this hole around that dot. And we do four of them. So we get four holes. We can make the, this rectangle. See, see here, there's another sketch tip for you. So sometimes when you do this, you end up with annoying shape. So if I wanted to extrude all of these, I have to select four to extrude, which is annoying. So instead I can take this rectangle, make that into a normal construction one, which means that it doesn't interfere with the sketch profiles. So then we have four profiles. We go ahead and extrude them through or through all. There we go. There we have the, the, the shape. So depending on if you're happy with that, you can always keep keep adding uh, or doing changes to it. Let's do some uh, minor things here. Maybe increase that a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of keep on working here forever, doing whatever you want. So there you have it. A uh, cool wing and of course you can do a lot to this if you want to change it up a bit but uh, yeah hope that helps you a bit and uh, make sure you subscribe click that like maybe send me a bear because of the whole corona situation that would be nice with a bear um, yeah other than that make sure you cat a lot and I'll see you guys in the next video